How is the money created? Where does it come from? Who benefits? And what purpose does it serve? For centuries, the mechanics of the money system have remained hidden from the prying eyes of the populace, yet its impact, both on a national and international level, is perhaps unsurpassed, for it is the monetary system that provides the foundations for international dominance and national control. What is a money system? What is the money behind the money system? We created the mess we're in, and now you're saying, sorry, trust us. as much as $50 million a year. Other banks were taking these ideas and applying them in ways that they'd never expected. Once the seed was planted, there wasn't any stopping it. We never imagined. They were just taking the risk. And it came right back like a boomerang. It turned into a Frankenstein monster. Today, as these very foundations are being shaken by crisis, the need for open and honest dialogue on the future of the monetary system has never been greater. What does a progressive financial system look like? And I want to hear what some of you think. Who thinks, for example, that we should ban banks from creating money? Do you trust the government? an incredible bogey man. An American flag is burned at the height of the demonstration. Both President Johnson and Francisco Franco were vilified. A new law in public protest added strain on Spanish American... Control over how money is created and what it's used for is this is a democratic issue. You currently have the banking sector, profit-seeking banking sector, you know, not accountable to anybody other than themselves who are creating up to 200 billion pounds a year of new spending power and deciding where in the economy that goes. This documentary will investigate and explain this ever-changing system. And the impact it has both on a national and international level In 2010, the total UK money supply stood at 2.5 trillion pounds. The 2.6% sign of this total was physical cash, 53.5 billion. The rest 2.1 trillion, or 97.4% of the total money supply was commercial bank money. the money supply, uh, what that means is putting the power to issue 
and allocate money back into the hands of people. Bank of England tells me that we raised $14 trillion in a year to bail out the banks. Banks create new money whenever the extent credit by existing assets. Or make payments on their own account, which mostly involves expanding their assets. When a bank buys securities, such as a corporate or government bond, The amount of Central Reserve Currency Bank has at the Bank of England. Is reduced by the corresponding amount that bank receives. This is the importance of Central Reserve Currency to bank. In 2006, the corridor system was introduced in which banks could set their own reserve targets each month. The rules changed again in March 2009, when the Bank of England introduced quantitative easing. Quantitative easing in effect gives settlement banks the central reserve currency for free. The central reserve currency is what is referred to as the real money in the fractional reserve model. But the fact is banks can have as much of this as they want. Central Reserve Currency itself is a form of flat money, which is backed by nothing. This, I suppose, is the question of democracy that's been opened up very starkly in Europe, that, that you have a government of bankers essentially imposed on you. It's bankers who more or less got us into this mess. And then you say, OK, bankers are the people who are therefore going to get us out of it. And instantly, they're going to run your, your country then. There's, there's a serious question of democracy that's opened up here. Historically, money creation was pegged to a commodity, often gold, but today it is pegged to nothing. Left with is a financial system since the early 70s that has no fixed exchange rate, that suddenly has increasingly open financial borders, that has central banks having to manage without having any control because there's nothing here where the gold used to be. Chaotically, they have to ease quantitatively. They have to lend as a lender of last resort. Creating a monetary system which is both fair and stable is possible and can be achieved. What are international organizations for if not for such a purpose? <laughs> 